Hello there, everybody. I am Sapna Mahadevan, your host for this wonderful evening. And I am here back again with another exciting and interesting episode of the Fiction Story Writing Masterclass. I hope that you all um, can clearly hear me out and I am visible. Yes. So do give me a thumbs up in the chat box uh, if that is correct, uh, because I think I had a technical glitch there. Um, and now I can see that I am already live. So if you can give me a show of hands in the chat box here, then I can get going with the episode, right? Um, okay, so great. I have uh, the peak enterprises waving hi to me. Hello there. And all of you saying that uh, we can hear you. Great. Thanks a lot for that bit of uh, information there. Really helpful. And let me now move ahead to um, the first segment here and uh, let me introduce you out to what are we dealing with here so of course it is the fiction story writing masterclass i am not sure why um is that screen visible to you quickly if you can give me a thumbs up in the chat box here Okay, so there it is. Yes. So it is the fiction story writing masterclass. Unleash the writer in you. Have oodles of imagination for the genre that we are going to deal with today, right? So that is really very important to have that bit of spark of creativity, you know, so that you can come up with a story idea and develop it further all along to make it a gripping and an interesting read. Yes. So let's delve deeper into this and let us understand what are the coming up segments that we have. So yes, uh, coming up, we have a gamut of activities planned specially for all you wonderful viewers. And uh, here is the list of things that we are going to deal with today. So as always, we have the essential, some essential tips. There are plot building pointers, tips on that as well. Um, the synonymous segment, which is going to really aid you in amping up your vocabulary. There is a special segment today, which is uh, named riddles. And uh, yes, no points for guessing there. These are fun riddles where you need to put on your thinking caps and uh, guess for the correct answers, right? Apart from that, we have a recommendation of the day and also icebreaker questions that will keep popping up every now and then. Yes. So are we all set? for today's episode. I am really charged up to go in all out for today's episode because the genre is something that really excites me. I love um, reading novels around this particular genre that we are going to explore for today. And that is why let's quickly move ahead to what is the golden question that we have here, which is what's the genre, right? So the genre for today, as I already uh, mentioned, is something that I really love personally. And uh, let me reveal that out to you. It is the mystery genre. Yes. So again, what is mystery? It is stories that revolve around uh, situations which are hard to decipher, um, really difficult to unravel the clues and come to the final realization, the final big reveal, right? So that's what is uh, mystery all about. And let me tell you that it is a blend of high stakes, uh, more higher tension and uh, the ability or the prowess to involve the reader as a detective. Yes. So every re reader there, whosoever is into reading the mystery storybook, um, always they feel that as if they are born detectives, right? And we as an audience always want to be there along with the detective and play the role of the detective and try finding out if we can unravel the puzzle all by ourselves, right? So that's what the mystery genre is all about. And it really gives us that bit of thrill to read a story set in mystery, right? Now, what is the subgenre of the day? That is something that we are going to see next. But before that, I have an an icebreaker question for all of you. And the question is, do you like Chinese cuisine? That's the question that we have here. If you like Chinese cuisine, give me a yay in the chat box. And if you are not really a great fan, then uh, please let me know that as well in the chat box here. 
right? And uh, if you are a fan of Chinese cuisine, then you might want to give me the name of some dishes as well, right? So this is the first icebreaker question that we have for today. Do let me know your answers in the chat box and let me tell you, I am um, really a fan of Chinese cuisine. I like that extra bit of garlic and uh, ginger in my manchao soup. Um, and uh, yes, uh, I think I would love Chinese any time of the day. And what about you? Okay, so I get some answers there. Of course, uh, most of you liking Chinese cuisine, I get thumbs ups, smileys, manchao soup, uh, Manchurian noodles. Yay. So all of these options coming up here in my chat box. And I'm really glad that I have a participative audience today as well here. Thanks for uh, staying around. Thanks for dropping in. And uh, do stay tuned in here because we are going to have a whole lot of fun with a lot of uh, fun segments that we have planned in today's episode. And uh, of course, the genre that we are going to deal with is mystery, which is itself going to elicit a lot of suspense and thrill, right? So that was the major or the broader category of genre that we have for today. And let me now take you through what's the subgenre of the day. And uh, the subgenre in mystery is murder mystery, right? So murder mystery is going to be a narrative about a murder that has happened and how the murder is murderer is discovered by the detective, yes? So that's the uh, genre that we are going to deal with today, which is murder mystery. And I hope that that gives you the thrill, the much needed thrill already. Yes. So if um, you like this genre here, do give me a yay in the chat box. And let's get started with our episode of the Fiction Story Writing Masterclass. Here we really have to work backwards. You know, in, while we are writing mystery stories, it is always... Um, seen as an expert tip where uh, you already know what the weapon has what is the weapon that was used for the murder you already know what the crime scene looked like and when you start writing backwards you know then um whole of it the all of the perspective that um really comes into light and uh, it is one expert tip that i want to give you at the starting of the episode itself that uh, you can first of all maybe think about the scene of the crime who the murderer is. And once all of that uh, is put together, you can start writing backwards, yes? So that helps in a way while you're writing murder mystery. That was the first expert tip that I had for you even before we start the essentials of uh, writing a murder mystery, right? Now let's move ahead before anything else to the first, uh, to the next icebreaker question. We already had the first one go uh, just a while back where we asked you about the Chinese cuisine and I can see a couple of yes answers coming here now as well. Great going there. Thanks a lot for all of your responses here. Um, Renal, Prisha, Jennifer, uh, Jacob, thanks a lot for all of these answers. And um, let me now quickly move ahead to the next icebreaker question. And the question we have next is what is your favorite sport? Right. So write to me about it here in the chat box. Uh, I think I have told you uh, many a times about my favorite sport, the one that I love playing with my children, um, an outdoor sport, and that is badminton. Yes. So I really love playing badminton with my uh, kids here. And uh, what is your favorite sport? Um, do let me know in the chat box. And I can see cricket come up there. There's football, there's soccer. And... Uh, Cricket again, cricket again, football. Great. So thanks again for all of these answers. Many of them are repetitive. I can see cricket coming up there a lot many times. Uh, we also have basketball. Um, and then there's football again. Great. So yes, thanks a lot for all of these answers. Great going there. You can keep on writing to me. Any thoughts, any questions that you have for me, probably do write to me here in the chat box. I am all ears waiting to have an interaction going with all of you wonderful bunch of people. So yes, uh, you can definitely write all your questions out here and I'll be more than glad to assist you with them. Yes. So that was the second icebreaker question. And I still see cricket coming up there next. So great going there. Thanks again for all of these answers. And uh, let's now quickly delve deeper into the murder mystery and how we can be writing one for ourselves. So the first set of things that we would really want to know is 
uh, the essentials, right? The prerequisites that we would definitely want to keep in our story to categorize it into murder mystery. And uh, these are the essentials. Let me showcase all the three definite elements that we would want going for our murder mystery story. And here they are. One is the characters. As always, for any story, it's going to be incomplete without the characters. And then, of course, we have the setting and um, the murder as well, right? So, yes, um, yes, ma'am, says Depic Enterprises here. Um, thanks for uh, listening me out and thanks for being there, staying tuned in here. Um, we have Shale, uh, Shale Mefor saying hello there. Um, hi, everybody. A big wave of hello to each one of you watching me in today's live. And uh, we are discussing the essentials of writing a murder mystery. And all of these are the elements that we are going to speak about in greater detail next, right? So the first element there is the characters. And as we all know, the murder mystery would uh, probably have a victim. There has to be a murderer. And of course, there needs to be a detective who's going to solve the case, right? So these three are the important and the prime ele key elements that we can have in our story. Other characters could be side characters whom you can introduce into your story. They could be family and friends of the victim, maybe uh, the police unit or uh, even the killer and his acquaintances can also form a valid part of your story, right? So these are the characters and our story is going to revolve around each of these characters, right? Now, after that, the second element that we have here is the setting, right? So we can talk about the place of the crime, the crime scene or or uh, even about uh, the victim's office, maybe, or a dark alley, whichever place suits you. And whatever your imagination can turn up into, all of these uh, settings can be imaginative. It can uh, stem up from your uh, creative writer's imagination and talk about the location, the place, maybe where the victim lived and worked. And all of these are going to be important plot settings, right? So um, think about this, ponder on this uh, piece of information here, the setting of the story. It could uh, also be one of the uh, elements which is of prime importance in our plot and which is crucial for every murder mystery story, right? So this is going to be the setting of our story and uh, one of the other key elements while writing a murder mystery, yes? Now, after the characters and the setting, we have the third element, which is, of course, the murder, right? So uh, this is what the story is all about. There is a murder that has happened and uh, the story is going to revolve around this particular crime. And we are going to find out who was the culprit, right? So the how, the where, the who and the whom, all of this needs to be answered. And uh, uh, when we do that in our story's plot, um, and, you know, give that big reveal out about who the culprit is, uh, the final culmination of a murder mystery story. Uh, that's going to be one of the other essentials uh, of our uh, story, right? So that's what this genre is all about. It is about murder that has happened and uh, all the questions uh, that you can be answering around this particular crime and all the loose ends. How do you tie all of that together using the different clues, maybe the list of suspects, uh, the witnesses that you have um, in the back of your hands, right? All of this is going to form the plot of the story. And um, again, it is up to you as a creative writer as to how you weave a story around all of these elements, right? So these were the three elements that we first discussed on the uh, topic of um, establishing the essentials. So we saw uh, the first one was about the characters. Then we had the setting of the story. That is the time and the place where the crime took uh, happened. And of course, also the murder, which is um, the prime element here in our murder mystery, right? Now, after all of these essentials, let's move ahead to the next synonymic word. And the word that we have for today, the first one is victim, right? So victim would be the sufferer, um, casualty that has happened or even a prey, yes? So 
do not get confused with uh, the homophone of pray, which is P-R-A-Y, right? Prayer, pray. But this one is P-R-E-Y. And uh, for the Anwars who do not know about homophones, um, you can surely Google that up too, right? So this is the first synonymic word, which is victim. We have sufferer, casualty, and pray, right? So um, as I already told you, um, homophone is going to be a word where uh, there are a pair of words and uh, they sound similar, but the spelling is different and the meanings are also different, right? In the case of P-R-E-Y, pray, which is victim, and P-R-A-Y, pray, which is prayer, right? So in these two words, uh, you can make it out that these are clearly homophones because they sound the same, but they have different spellings and different meanings, right? So uh, do not get confused here with the word pray. And that was the first synonymic word for today, victim, yes? So you may want to Google all of that up and uh, write it down in your Google journal. It's uh, really going to do you a world of good because it's surely going to amp up your vocabulary, right? Now, after that first synonymic word, I'm going to move ahead to the next icebreaker question. And the question is, what is your favorite dry fruit, right? So yes, do let me know your favorite dry fruit. Um, for me, it has to be almonds. And uh, that's a winter nut that I really love to have. Now, uh, quickly, if you can give me your answers in the chat box about your favorite dry fruit. Um, I'm waiting for a couple of answers here. Okay, so I get a smiley there from Prisha. Thanks a lot for that. Um, then uh, thanks again for all the likes as well here. Great. Uh, we get raisins. Okay, lovely. So raisins is something that Joseph would like to have. Favorite dry fruit. What is your favorite dry fruit was the question that we had here. SK Imran saying, good evening. A very good evening to you, Imran. Thanks a lot for joining the live. We have our icebreaker segment going. And the question is, what is your favorite dry fruit? Okay, so I see apricot, almonds, raisins, cashew nut. Lovely. Thanks a lot for all of these answers here in the chat box. I hear all of you there. Lovely. Raisins again. Great. So repetitive answers coming up there, but I can see that almonds, raisins, apricots, all of these are our favorite dry fruits, right? So with that question being answered, let me now move ahead to the expert tips in establishing the essentials. And since we are looking at um, how we can be writing a murder mystery. Let me tell you that, um, you know, great mysteries, they are a perfect blend of uh, being a good read. But at the same time, uh, it gives us a feeling of playing a smart game, right? So we all are trying to fit into the shoes of the detective and trying to unravel the puzzle all by ourselves, isn't it? Now, just like, um, let me read that out to you, just like in the words of uh, the favorite author, Mickey Spillane, nobody reads a mystery to get to the middle. They read it to get to the end. If it is a letdown, they won't buy anymore. The first page sells that book, right? So it has to open with intrigue. The last page sells your next book. Now that is such a correct piece of advice there, right? So when whenever you're writing a murder mystery, it has to open with intrigue. That's the expert tip there. And uh, of course, the ending also has to be perfect, perfectly made out for a murder mystery, right? So let's uh, check out all the expert tips that we have here. So as I already told you, um, the best of writers are also ones who love to read. Yes. So whenever you read a murder mystery, ask yourself these questions, such as what is the crucial bit of information that is set out in the first three chapters? Or maybe you can also ask what makes the chapter compelling, a compelling read? What makes the story so very gripping? And why is it that I am so very engaged into that story, so very obvious? absorbed into that story, right? So all of these questions um, need to be pondered upon while you're reading a murder mystery for yourself. And also, um, 
you know, we see that a murder mystery chapter always, most usually, I should say, they end with cliffhangers, right? So a cliffhanger is kind of an abrupt ending, which uh, leaves you hanging uh, on that cliff there. And of course, this is imaginative. But uh, what it does to you is that you definitely want to turn the page and quickly find out what's going to happen in the next chapter, right? So uh, to make sure that the reader keeps on turning those pages you need to create a cliffhanger in the end of the chapter so that your next chapter opens with intrigue right so am i making any sense here do let me know in the chat box right that's the first expert tip that we have okay so i get thumbs ups there uh swati says yes thanks a lot for that um uh, SK Imran says uh, he loves uh, best murder mystery book. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for that comment as well. Great. So now um, let's move ahead to the next expert tip that we have here. And the next expert tip is that um, whenever you're opening um, your uh, chapter of a murder mystery, right, do not talk casually about the weather or about the main character set off to buy something from the market. Yes. Begin your book when the action is already underway, right? So we are talking about murder mystery here and uh, the implication has to be such, right? So uh, start your book with um, intense feelings uh, and uh, already when the action is underway and you can always fill in the gaps as the plot unfolds further right so that's again another expert tip that we have for all of our dear viewers for today and with these expert tips i can see that i get a lot of thumbs ups there in the chat box uh so yes makes total sense right now with that let us now move ahead to the next segment which is the synonymic word unfolds now unfold would also mean unfurl unravel or uncoil but it only means to say that you get to know of something right unfolds means when when that big revelation is done, yes? So this was the next synonymic word that we have. Instead of saying that I came to know about this, I got to be aware about it. You can say unfold, unfurl, unravel, and uncoil, right? So that's what uh, we used here in our expert tip, fill in the gaps as and when the plot unfolds, yes? Now, after that, I'm going to move ahead to the next segment. The next segment is another icebreaker question. And the question is, what do you like the most? Again, a food question. Do you like pancakes better or do you like pies, right? Uh, write to me in the chat box here. I think I would go in for a pie and maybe an apple pie, yes. Um, but uh, do let me know your answers as well. I am eager to know what you all love eating. Would it be pancakes or pies? Um, I get pie there in the answer box, um, pancakes as well, following the pie coming there right back up here in the chat box. And um, we have pancake come up next again. Okay, so again, mixed bag of responses, right? Um, Ridula tells me pie. Um, yes, lovely. Okay, so thanks a lot again for all of these answers. I can see mixed bag of responses there. Uh, pie and pancake both um answers getting there to my chat box right so after that icebreaker question let's move ahead to the movie title trivia and here as you all know i'm going to show you some pictures and you need to quickly guess the popular murder mystery movie titles right so i think that it's going to be easy for you um here is the first one that we have a popular movie and uh, you can tell me the name of the movie in the chat box Mm, I'm waiting for all your answers. Don't know is the comment that I get first. That is completely okay, Rakesh. Um, okay, so let me reveal that one out. It is Lost Girls, right? That's the name of the movie there. And uh, let's move ahead to the next picture here. There we go. It is a Bollywood movie with a stellar cast. And uh, can you guess this murder mystery? No answers coming up there. So I'm going to reveal that well, that as well. Here it is. Talash is the name of the movie. And the tagline says the answer lies within. Yes. Now with that, quickly moving over to the next picture here. There it is. 
Okay, so Prachi gives me the correct response here. That is murder mystery. Thanks a lot for that answer. And uh, the last picture of the day, brace yourselves for this one. Uh, quick answers needed. Here is the picture. And uh, let me also tell you that it has been adapt adapted from a novel and that to a popular one. Yes, that is correct. It is Murder on the Orient Express. Okay. So, yes, thanks a lot for trying to guess out and attempting all of these answers here. And uh, let me also quickly move ahead now to the next segment, which is plotting the plot, right? Now, for you to write a gripping murder mystery, what are the plot elements that uh, you would definitely want to keep in your story? Yes. So, all the three engaging plot building pointers. Let me bring that here onto the screen. And uh, here we have the killer and the characters as the first plot building pointer. And then we have the crime and the clues that could be one of the other things um, that can actually add the interest level to our story. Yes. And of course, the revelation, right? That's the third element that we are going to discuss here. And uh, let's now move ahead and delve deeper into each one of these elements so that we understand in greater detail what is it that we can be incorporating into our story about all of these elements so that our readers have um, an absorbing uh, time reading that story, right? So the first element here is the killer and the characters. Of course, um, we are supposed to be specific about our characters. For example, if uh, while you know, while we are giving the killer a motive for the murder, it could be a traumatic past that we are going to talk about, or maybe his family life, his thought processes, right? Similarly, details about the victim can also be put forth into our story. And um, this will uh, give a uh, depth of uh, character to our story and uh, its various elements. So we can talk about the victim, the type of the murder that had taken place, about the investigator's brilliance, maybe, or their negligence, whatever comes to your mind, right? So talk about each of the characters, their backstory. And uh, also very important point is that we give a motive to the uh, killer for his crime, right? So this motive, again, can stem up from your imagination. It could be a um, lifestyle uh, issue that the killer had in the past, or uh, maybe it could be something to do with his family, right? So whatever is uh, the tra trauma that you're going to talk about in his life, that needs, uh, that's, that is going to play a special role in um, the motive that he has behind committing that crime, right? So this is the first element here, the killer and the characters. And uh, let's move ahead to the next um, element here. And uh, the next element that we have, okay, before that, let me also check some of my, of, uh, the, some of the comments that I have here in the chat box. Uh, okay, Imran tells me um, your favorite murder mystery movie okay so i can tell you books maybe imran i really love uh, reading agatha christie and uh, sydney sheldon as well so they have some intriguing uh, plot going in their murder mysteries and uh, it's um, really um, an absorbing time to read such murder mysteries where uh, you know i can also form a or play a role of the detective myself and try and unravel the puzzle. Yes, of course, um, it uh, gets complicated in Sidney Sheldon uh, stories. Uh, but yes, it is actually a very captivating murder mystery read. Yes. Uh, so thanks a lot for answering me that, uh, for asking me that question there. And uh, for all those emojis that uh, you all have been sending me, um, a big thank you to all of you. And uh, after that first element in the plot building pointers, let me move ahead to the second element, which is the crime and the clues. Yes. So now, whenever uh, the audience is introduced to the murder around which the story is based, um, we also have to write or talk about how the detective is working round the clock to solve that mystery, right? So what all you can be adding into your plot uh, is something that uh, you all would have as a question, right? So you can talk about the different clues that the detective has found in the scene of the crime, or uh, maybe the witnesses who have uh, come forth and uh, who are uh, 
ready to testify against the crime or maybe you can talk about the list of suspects that you have yes um and the various plot twists and turns that you can be creating through your imagination all of these things are going to peak the interest level of your readers and this is what we need to uh, be doing for writing a murder mystery yes the crime and the clues play um very important role here and the detective whenever he or she finds a new clue and uh, an unexpected lead or a crack in the suspect's alibi that shocks them the reader also tries to you know change the course of the investigation along with the detective right so as i already told you we all feel as if we are born detectives right and whenever we are reading a mystery novel we want to also be be playing the role of a detective and try to unravel the puzzle yes so uh, try to pass on that shock that your detective gets into uh, from the story try to pass it on to your readers as well and that is where creative writing and skill and the prowess that you have towards your craft comes forth right so this is the second element the crime and the clues and let me now move ahead uh, before that uh, to the chat box as well imran says thank you you're most welcome imran and uh, now i'm going to move ahead to the third element which is the revelation right so before i tell you what this is all about let me again um, read out to you a quote uh, by pd james and it says i always know the end of the mystery before i begin to write tension should be held within the novel and there should be no longers of boring uh, of boring interrogation right so what it means is that um if you're going to talk about the interrogation that is happening um throughout the plot scenes it is going to actually bore your readers right so what writers um do normally while they write a murder mystery genre is that they write backwards yes so they already know about the mystery they already uh, first pinpoint on who the culprit is going to be and then they start writing the story backwards to give it that much needed uh, tension and the twang uh, that they can get out of it right so uh, this is what we also want to do here the revelation uh, is uh, what is it that the detective uncovers at the end of the story right which is the last remaining piece of the puzzle and uh, let me tell you that um, for a murder mystery story the uh, revelation should actually be the the whatever the solution to the mystery it should actually be a realization and not a revelation right so what i mean by that is um like i already told you every person feels from the bottom of their heart that uh, they are a born detective yes so readers are going to start solving the mystery uh, from the word go right they start reading about the crime in the mystery novel and uh, they have automatically started uh, to play the role of the detective right so give them the satisfaction of a good solve and what you can do is uh, when the mystery uh, the whatever the mystery that solution has already got revealed you know the reader needs to be able to trace the story back and uh, recognize the path that the detective followed yes now what the detective did differently to solve that puzzle um is something that should impress your readers right on the other hand if uh, the detective has one piece of information uh, which the readers did not have right so if you have not mentioned about that piece of information in your story and finally at the time of the big reveal um you you know trace back uh, the culprit with the help of that bit of information then your readers are going to feel cheated isn't it so any solution which uh, seems like uh something which is new and surprising um is going to leave your readers feel cheated and they are going to have that sour taste in their mouth yes so think and uh, ponder uh, uh you know they uh, the readers they are going to think and ponder as to how was i supposed to know this when i did not have this particular information right so we are never going to get to that point um what we can do as uh, creative writers um is that give all the pieces and bits of information to our readers as well so that they also have the possibility of solving that crime but in the chance that they could not solve the crime by themselves but during the big reveal when they come to know of the solution they should be able to trace uh, to track back 
or to trace back to the point where they deviated from the path and they should get impressed with uh, the detective's deductive ability, right? So that's the revelation that we are going to, we are talking about here in our, our plot building pointer. And actually the big reveal needs to be a realization for your readers and not a kind of a surprise element that has sprang up from nowhere, right? So after all of these plot building pointers, let me now move ahead to the next synonymic word. And the word that we have, um, it's taking a little bit of a time to come up here. Okay, so the word is outstanding. And it means um, the synonyms for outstanding could be excellent, superb, and wonderful, right? So these were the synonymic words for today. And uh, with that, I'm going to move ahead to the next segment. And the next segment that we have here are expert tips on plotting the plot, right? So the first expert tip that we have here is that uh, writing mysteries, it is always like crafting uh, puzzles and the vital piece of the puzzle is typically the criminal's identity, right? So a great mystery, it will introduce several potential suspects all throughout the course of the narrative and uh, uh, it might allow the reader to meet the actual culprit early on but of course they are not going to know that from the starting and they are going to give time to the readers to uh, doubt on that guilt list that uh, the suspect has and similarly you also can list all of your suspects down explore their possible motives for them to be committing the crime and uh, in that manner uh, the interest level or the suspense level can be increased in the plot right so that's the first expert tip and the second expert tip that we have here is that uh, whatever the setting that you have for your story, be it a small town setting or maybe a cosmopolitan city kind of a setting, use the natural atmosphere and the attributes of the place uh, to enhance the action and the intrigue, right? So um, you can talk about uh, dark alleys in a place where the crime has taken place, or maybe you can talk about moving from interesting locations where important plot building pointers are taking place all throughout the narrative of your story and make your mystery story all the more gripping, right? Now, after this expert tip, let's again move ahead to the next expert tip, which is that uh, mystery writing, it shows instead of uh, being, uh, instead of telling something, it actually shows you, right? So there's that bit of visualization that we want to have in our murder mystery. So you need to have descriptive writing style, create scenes that allow your reader to explore and discover the clues, even those that your main character might miss, yes? So how can you come about doing this? You have a vivid description of each of the setting that you're going to talk uh, in your narrative, right? Now, after all of these expert tips, I'm sure that you have a whole lot of idea on what are all of the things that you can be including in your plot building pointers right um and uh yes thumbs up to that and uh, i hope that you're going to write a short story by yourself including all of these pointers opening with intrigue uh talking about uh the victims or the a criminal's backstory, yes, giving it a gripping and an absorbing cliffhanger at the end of each chapter so that the next chapter opens with intrigue, right? All of these expert tips are something that you should be uh, using in your story, right? Now, after that, uh, let me move ahead to the next synonymic word. And the word that we have here is enhance, right? So the meaning for enhance would be boost, upgrade, or intensify. Now, as I tell you always, do jot down all these words and uh, form a ready reckoner for yourself so that you can amplify on your uh, English vocabulary, right? Um, this was the last synonymic word that we had for today. And after this, I'm going to move into the recommendation of the day. And it is a book for today by Agatha Christie. And the name of the book is The ABC Murders. That's an interesting and a gripping read. Agatha Christie is uh, really a fun read uh, and something that you're going to be totally lost into, yes. So that's the recommendation of the day from us to you. Have an interesting time with the book, The ABC Murders, yes, by written by Agatha Christie. Right. So now we are coming to the end of our episode. And uh, here I have 
um, a quick roundup for all of my dear viewers so that I leave you refreshed with um, the insights that you have had from today's episode. So at a glance, we have first things first, the essentials. So we are going to talk about the characters of our murder mystery. And essentially, they are going to be, one of them is going to be the victim, uh, the murderer, and also the detective, right? And there are, of course, going to be side characters who can be family and friends of all of these people. And then there is the murder, which is uh, around which our plot is going to revolve. And of course, we are also going to give descriptive uh, setting to our story, right? So this is uh, the essentials that we, these are the essentials that we saw here. And uh, next, we have the plot building pointers. So we saw that we are going to talk about the clues, the plot twists, the cliffhangers, uh, the final realization of um, who the culprit was, that is the re revelation in our story, the ending, that is the climax, and of course also about the killer and uh, the various characters, right? So these are the plot building pointers, which is going to give it a gripping um the, the the mystery of our story is going to um, really give a gripping read to our audiences and they are going to be on to the edge of their seats, um, really curious to know how the story ends, right? Now, after this, we have the fun project work for all of you and I strongly encourage each one of you to be doing this. Take that first step and try writing a murder mystery for yourself, right? Um, that is the project work for all of you. And um, with that, we come to the end of our episode. And let me tell you, tomorrow, it's going to be the horror genre. And I am Sapna Mahadevan signing out for today. But tomorrow, I will be meeting you again with another interesting episode of uh, the genre that is the broader genre that is horror. And of course, we will have a subcategory that we would explore into the horror genre, right? So do stay tuned in with me tomorrow as well at 6 p.m. India time. And uh, we will have a lot of fun, right? Um, so yes, uh, signing out for today. Do take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye.